I want to make a little video to talk to parents about what is star testing, how do we use it, and actually go over a way we can read a star report. So what is star testing? Star testing is a state approved vendor assessment it's called that tests students in English and also in mathematics. What we do is we test students at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the end of the year to do a couple of different things. Track their growth over a period of a year, but also identify what current achievement levels they're at. The STAR assessment is adaptive, which means that it will change based on the student. If a student answers a question correctly, it'll give them a question that's a little bit higher level. If they answer another question correctly, it'll give them a question that's higher level yet. If they happen to miss the next question, that level will actually drop. And what it does, it zeroes in on that student's level of achievement. Our second through eighth graders take the STAR reading assessment. Our kindergartners and our first graders take the early literacy assessment. For mathematics, all grades first through eighth take the STAR test. Teachers use a STAR assessment to work collaboratively in groups, discover what the strengths and weaknesses are of the various classes. Then those teachers collaboratively work at designing instructional changes to help meet whatever those strengths and weaknesses are. That way we can tackle on the team level, on a building level, what are the things that we have, need to have our students improve and what are some things that we can take and take advantage of because they're really great at. Teachers can also use the STAR assessment at the classroom level. They can individualize instruction by looking at what are the strengths of an individual student in order to develop programs of enrichment or what are weaknesses of an individual student so they can develop individualized programs for intervention. So now I want to take an opportunity to actually look at a STAR report and I have removed the student's name for confidentiality reasons but I wanted to break the report down for you because very soon we're going to be sending those reports home to parents and I would like you to be able to understand what that report says. So in essence, a STAR report, each STAR report will have three different sections. This first section, or part one, I called testing logistics. Now on the surface, you may look at that and say, well, that's pretty mundane information. What does it tell me? Well, one of the really big pieces of information it tells me is right here. That tells me how much time this particular student spent on the test. We understand through the research provided by STAR that students that take the English language arts test should take approximately 20 to 25 minutes. As you can see from this student's assessment, they took 16 minutes and 42 seconds. This is an opportunity for us as educators and as parents to talk to them about the importance of the assessment and what it does to help both them and us design instruction to help them improve. So if I were to talk to this student at home, if this were my student, I would tell them, hey, you know what, you spent 16 minutes on this assessment. Next time, why don't you try your best, try a little bit harder, and let's see if we can work for a good solid 20 or 25 minutes. The second portion of the STAR assessment is the part that I refer to as the overall performance indicators. In this particular section of the STAR assessment, it places all students into one of four categories, an urgent intervention category, an intervention category, an on-watch category, or an at or above benchmark category. Those categories are based on the percentile rank that the student earns when they take the assessment. It also takes and norm references it to all students that take the STAR assessment throughout the United States. In this particular section, you're going to have three different subcategories. One is the scaled score with an appropriate lexile level, a percentile rank, which that's the rank that tells us where they lie within these four categories, and also its instructional reading level. As Teachers, we would look at this report and we would identify specific materials that this student could use that is at their grade level, but also with the understanding that students are still responsible for mastery level of their actual grade level that they are assigned. As a parent, I would look at this report and I would help my student use this Lexile range to select the appropriate books for them to read for AR points or if it's just for an enjoyment. This is the third section of a STAR reading report that I want to draw attention to. This gives us a little bit more specific information about subdomains measured on the test. So for example, in the literature category, we can see different subcategory scores. Here we can see that 64 is the lowest subcategory for literature for this particular student. That means within the literature category, their weakest area is key ideas and details. Similarly, in the informational text category, we can see that a weakness for this student is range of reading and level of text complexity. 
These are two things that we as teachers and a staff can individualize instruction for those students based on what those weaknesses are. But this is also important to accentuate the fact that they also have many strengths. Here's a strength for this student in range of reading and level of text complexity within literature, but notice that was a relative weakness here in informational text. Additionally, here's a strength for this student in integration of knowledge and ideas within informational text. So when we're designing appropriate intervention for this student, our focus is going to be either in literature and informational text and looking at how we can use this strength to improve this weakness is the Lexile range. You'll notice that this corresponds to our Accelerated Reader program. You can, as a parent, can go to this website and you can actually enter books or search for books of this identified Lexile range. That way your student won't become frustrated as they look for books to earn their AR points. One thing that I think is very key and important is always include the student's interest when selecting those books, not just their Lexile range. If a student is interested in a book and it's appropriate to their reading level, they will read it. You'll notice that this is a STAR math assessment now. It has the same logistical information at the top, but notice when compared to the reading assessment, the student we looked at before took 16 minutes and some odd seconds to finish the test. This student on the math assessment took 43 minutes and 55 seconds to complete this test. In general, that's a little bit longer to complete a math test than the average. Again, 20 to 25 minutes on task is about what we look for. However, as we look more at this report, we can understand there's a reason why this student took 43 minutes on this particular test. In reference to the 43 minutes that the student took in the logistical section, we now can see that they earned a percentile rank of 99. From a mathematical standpoint, that means that this particular student scored a better overall score on the test than any other student that took this test nationwide. So now we have an understanding that that student spent 43 minutes on the test, but as they took it, the questions kept getting harder and harder and harder, and they kept going, thus extending the length of the test. So what that implies to us is that if students spend more time, more quality time, taking the test and answering the questions, that we can get a relatively better overall percentile score for each individual. We continue to look at this STAR report for mathematics. Even though we know from above that this student scored in the 99th percentile in mathematics, we can look at their subdomains and we can see that they still have areas that they can work to improve. So despite the fact that this student, when compared with their peers nationally, scored in the 99th percentile, we can see that there's a relative weakness in geometry. Now there are many reasons for that in terms of the way curriculums are designed and the way that things are ordered throughout a school year, but that's an area of enrichment that we could work on with this student as we individualize their instruction we can see that this student was a sixth grade student. The recommendation that's being made for us is that we provide curriculum at the eighth grade level. Currently, this student is being accelerated in eighth grade mathematics. How do our students use STAR assessment? Currently, our students take the STAR assessment, but we're still trying to evaluate what purpose or what goal they have in mind for that assessment. Our goal here at St. Joe is to take and move toward those students understanding and using the STAR assessments to create their own goals and monitor their own progress for student achievement and improvement. A parent can use a STAR report by choosing appropriate books for that student to read for AR points or for enjoyment. A parent could also take a look at the different areas of mathematics that might be able to be worked at at home. That way, individualized can be both at home and at school.